This is Twit. The performance and efficiency cores from the latest uh, Intel CPUs. Um, how much of a headache has that been? And, and this may be a dumb question, but why was that not easier because we already have big dot little over an arm <laughs> um first off i'm not a scheduler person i am not okay. a scheduler person at all um that is not my area i do drivers little tiny things over the side and make your mouse work things like that um keep your serial port alive that's been alive for forever um <laughs> big little is scary big little is a nightmare and if you look at what intel did with their cores it isn't the same as big little um it looks a little different that being said arm is coming out with cores that are like a 32 and a 64 bit core on the same chip and we're supposed to migrate between them talk about a scheduling nightmare um <laughs> the things that intel did was kind of like that they were radically different cores from what i remember I could be totally wrong. And it just took more logic. It took a lot more work and a lot more effort to do this type of stuff in a way that will work for everybody. Remember, we're a general purpose operating system. We have to have something that works and a scheduler that works for everybody. And that's a hard thing to do to tune, to process and make things work well over time. Big Little took us a long time to get working right, mostly because the hardware didn't work very well. Um, the first three couple of rounds of Big Little <laughs> made no sense at all because you all the power was in the RAM. So it kept all the power to keep the RAM shutting off a big core, save no power at all. Um, turns out CPU designers don't talk to the RAM designers. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, that being said, so the Intel stuff, I'm, I've, what I know of, it's just, it's a radically different design. So it just took a while to get there. And okay. It's getting there, um, but it, it's getting better. So. Oh yes, no. We, we've been we've been following that story too. You know, the, the, okay, the new Intel CPUs they'll work under Linux, but maybe wait for a couple more kernel releases before they get really good. So I, I want to I want to go to something else that I've been following. We're running out of time, so I'm going to go through these real quick. Something else that I've been following, and that is the actual real time patches. And of course, that's being done by Linux Tronics, who got bought by Intel, which actually way to go Intel because Linux Tronics was having a funding problem, and so Intel kind of as far as we can tell from the outside, kind of scooped in and saved the day to keep those things going. Um, I saw a comment from Linus on one of these one of these threads that essentially said, well, there's there's not very many people that care about this. And it's only for, you know, these these very, very specific instances. And I'm over here going, wait a second, I do I do audio like musician work on Linux. I care about trying to get low latencies, want the real time patches help with that and so i'm curious no, and i know there's a no, bunch of driver things no they won't with this. They, they don't they don't they don't help with that remember real they time don't. is not low latency real time is deterministic latency so yes. it can be really so, slow determinism <laughs> so it's not low when, latency <laughs> when 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 you tune your audio interface though for really low latency one of the problems that we see is most of the time it can handle that but every once in a while you'll have an x run and so i've always seen the audio guy saying well if you can actually go into a real-time mode you can prevent those x runs because you know that the kernel is going to be ready for each of those packets yes and, and you can do that and that, that is a good thing if you can to tune that thing to say you cannot overrun this type of stuff then yes it will but Real, remember, real time on its own doesn't guarantee latency issues. Now, so, if your system it can handle the guarantee that it will give you that, most audit consumer his, um, hardware can't because, like the, the <laughs> CPU, SMP, um, MSI. There's some other crazy stuff underneath the CPU that takes it away from Linux, and we have no idea it's even gone and comes back. But um, there's some really cool things you can do with Linux. Um, now you can take Linux off all the CPU or off a CPU and then run all your audio stuff on just that CPU. So then you don't even have Linux involved. And I know a number of people do that. But real time, I mean, traditionally laser welding robots, um, very, very like John Deere tractors. There's some things where latency really, really matters. Um, yeah. Audio, most consumer hardware can do audio. I have a Raspberry Pi that I can do massively fun audio stuff with perfect no just a normal kernel muse has their guitar that they play in concert has a raspberry pi inside it running linux to do a audio uh, uh, um, mpi interface out no real-time kernel new um the giant systems with the sound and the things like that with audio those are not using the real-time kernel but that being said the real-time kernel is cool um i'm really happy about it it's cleaning up a lot of problems that we've had in linux over the years um and it's almost done it's almost done hey folks i'm Ant pruitt and what do you get your favorite tech geek that has everything? A Club Twit gift subscription, of course. 
TWIP podcasts keep them informed and entertained with the most relevant tech news podcasts available. With the Club TWIP subscription, they get access to all of our podcasts ad-free. They also get access to our members-only Discord, access to exclusive outtakes, behind-the-scenes, and special content such as AMAs, which I just love hosting, plus exclusive shows such as Hands on Mac, Hands on Windows, and the Untitled Linux Show. Purchase your Geek's gift at twit.tv slash club twit, and it will thank you every day. <laughs>